Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be introducing sets. Now we've talked about sets a little bit in this video, but this one's going to be dedicated comparing sets to lists and dictionaries and what you might want to use a set for. So let's first talk about sets versus lists. So at this point you probably have worked with lists and you understand you put in the data as individual entities. There's no key value pair like a dictionary. Same thing for sets. So that's how they're similar to lists. So we would create a set like so. Let's say we have something called items and you just put the data inside of curly braces separated by commas. So the only difference between a set and list syntactically is that the set uses curly braces. But functionality wise, a huge difference between a set and a list is that a set cannot have duplicates. So what that means is I can add another element in here by using the add method and we'll add in sword again. If we go ahead and print items, there will only be one occurrence of sword. And you can see it's actually right here. There's no guaranteed order with sets. So that's why they're in a different order. Now let's compare sets to dictionaries. Well, you define them with curly braces, same as you would a dictionary, but you don't use a colon with a key value pair. You just put the data in there by itself. They do use hashing behind the scenes, but the thing that is hashed is not the key, rather it's the data itself. So sword is hashed, rubber duck is hashed, and slice of pizza is hashed. This means that the data you add inside of a list must be hashable. So if you try to add a list in here, well, this is going to give you an error because it says unhashable type list. A cool use of sets is to easily check if certain items have been flagged. You know, maybe every time a certain thing occurs, we add it to a set and we can go back and check that set to see what has occurred. So let's go through an example of that. It's going to be similar to the example we had in the previous video if you watched that with dictionaries, but pretty much we're going to create a set of conjunctions. These are words used to combine sentences. So it would look like this, conjunctions, and we're going to say for and nor, but, or, so, and also yet. Forgot that one. There we go. All right, so I'm terrible at English, but I think I got them all in there. And here's what we're gonna do. We're going to have a message or some data to go through I'll just paste my completely original poem in here again. You can type out your own string if you want, or you can copy this. And you can split this into a list word by word by saying completely original poem dot split. And we will assign this to a new variable called data, like so. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna iterate through data for word in data. And then in here, we're just gonna check what the word is. So we'll say if str dot lower pass in the word, and if this is in conjunctions, and what we're gonna do is, if it is in the conjunctions, we're going to add this to a set called scene, so we can keep track of what conjunctions we've seen or not. And to do that, here's how you do it. You would say scene, and then assign it set. So you have to do it like that. You can't just do it like this, because this is actually an empty dictionary, which is not what we want. So we wanna say set. So we're pretty much just seeing if these conjunctions are found in this string here. So what we would do now is just say scene.add, pass in str.lower word. Then at the end, what we can do is we can just print scene like so. So we can see all of the conjunctions that were found in this string, but an and. If for example, we had another one in here, let's just say, or yes, so those will show up in here as well. So notice that the set is very useful for a yes or no check. Was but seen? Yes. Was and seen? Yes. It can't tell us how many times it was seen. If you want to do something like that, then the dictionary is the ideal data structure to use. That's all I got for you guys in this video. That was your intro to sets. Stay tuned. We're going to continue talking about sets and get some more work with them. See you then.